Hey guys, how's it going? It's Antonio. This is another one of my training vlogs. Uh, you'll notice on the sheet, I only have the max, the two max effort days. That's because something happened in my personal life that um, I could not do the dynamic effort days. Typically, I would have just done them anyways, but because I had a meet coming up, I didn't have the time. The sheet says uh, 30 pounds of bands on bench press. I don't have a 30 pound bands. Those are the red rogue ones, and they're the most popular ones. So they're always sold out, and I haven't been able to find a pair. I can just get 30 pounds of bands that aren't rogue, but I just want to have my set the same. Uh, also, follow my Instagram. I have an Instagram that's going to be in the description. Uh, you'll get updates of my training a lot faster on there because I don't have to upload a video, render it, commentate over it, uh, like stuff like my, re my meat results. Those will be up on my channel probably in the next week, but they're already up on my Instagram. So I've done this 50 pounds of bands twice. First time with close grip. Uh, and I used to bench close grip because I focus on overhead pressing historically. But now that I'm doing a few powerlifting meets, I switched to wide grip for the long term. I got 225. That was the close grip. So that would be here matching it. And then a month or two back, I do have the training vlog up for it. Uh, I did 50 pounds of bands with wide grip and I got 215. Maybe could have went a little higher, but because I don't have to do rep work off of it, I was happy with the training max. Today, I got 235. It was a grinder. Uh, when I hit the 225 close grip, my max on the bench was 270. So now that I'm wide grip doing 235, 50 pounds of bands, uh, which is 285 total, I'm assuming I can bench wide grip 275 to 280 because that would be consistent with how it was last time. That may not be how it is for you, but I knew like right before I did that 50 pounds of bands close grip, I hit a 270 close grip. So here's me hitting threes. Uh, I don't always show all the sets or else the videos would be so long, but because this video is only two workouts, I'm going to be showing more sets. So this is, I forgot the exact weight on there, but I could do percentage based. This is like 223, 222 pounds, like just barely under 225 pounds. But at this point, I'm still cutting. I'm still cutting in this video. I'm about 211 pounds here. So I actually, you'll see in the next clip, I missed the third rep of the third set. Uh, this is technically back off work. So for back off work, okay. I haven't done any back off work for deadlifts in a long time. Uh, like maybe two, three years ago since I've done Wendler, 531. Squat, I haven't done back off work in months. I did here and there, maybe for fives, and I've done a few sets of tens with the safety squat bar. But bench, I've done a lot of back work on. Uh, a lot of people do back off work on bench, usually in the tens, sometimes in the fives. Uh, my coach decided, because he's had so many lifters at this point in time, he would divide them into groups. Like, hey, this group is going to do back off work on the squat. The other group's going to do different quad work, but the rest of the lifts are going to be the same. So whatever is the difference, we'll know it's because of the choice of quad work, squats via... Uh, direct quad work or not direct quad work but smaller movements right uh, that just aren't squats so what he's found is a group that does the back off work they get actually pretty much the same results uh, there was no difference but they uh they got more beat up because they're using more weight on the bar to squat it takes more weight to squat than it is to belt squat or to do some step ups or some split squats right uh, here's me doing chin-ups, just sets of six, maybe sets of seven. I, I'm not, I don't remember. You guys can count. Uh, you can see I'm leaning out a bit if you've been watching my videos for a while because I'm trying to cut to the 90 kg class. Uh, in this video, you're going to see why I decided to not do the 90 kg and do the 100 kg. I actually didn't really bulk up for the 100 kg. I competed at 94 and a half kg. It's fine because it gives me 11, 12 pounds to grow into my next meet at 100 kg. But yeah, uh, for the back off work, one other benefit of back off work, that's my dog, she's so annoying. Uh, uh, one benefit of back off work that my coach doesn't mention, because I think he's so far past this point. Yeah, I just think he's so far past this point is, if you're a beginner, maybe he does do this with his very, very novice beginners. You do need the back off work, not for any muscle activation reasons, for stimulus, for, for stimulus to fatigue reasons, because they actually need to practice how to squat. They need to practice how to bench. Right, because they probably don't know how if they're a complete novice. But in that case, it's fine because they're not benching or squatting that much. So they don't have to worry about the stimulus to fatigue, obviously. Right. So for benching, we do back off work. But here I did threes. Uh, for the squats, I only do heavy singles for back off work because, like I've stated in a different video, January of this year, I had a little mock meet with a couple friends. 
and we programmed three sets of three for me. And he decided, hey, three sets of three kind of beat beat you up. And his other lifters too, it beats you up. So we're just going to do five sets of one, three sets of one, whatever. I do three sets of one, I'm cutting. Maybe for other people, they do five sets of one uh, at 85%. So why the 85%? Because we already max, we're pre-fatigued, and the 85% is all we need to hit the upper threshold muscle fibers. And uh, also, every single rep will be an effective rep. So here's me doing the dumbbells. So I did a max, and I did threes for the bench. Now I'm doing dumbbells for some volume. I still do need hypertrophy. Why do I use dumbbells? For that stimulus to fatigue ratio I mentioned. Dumbbells use less weight because your stabilizers are more involved. Your stabilizers, for me, are my limiting factor. You can see I grind out a few reps, even though the form isn't as good. Uh, reason being is, it's less weight on the primary movers, so my chest, my delts, my triceps, they'll recover faster. But I also get, one, I get a deeper range of motion because the bar is not touching my chest, and I get a stretch reflex. Um, stretch reflexes are very good, but I'm not saying if you ha you need a stretch reflex, but if all of my work is barbell work, paused work, because I have a meet, you can get a stretch reflex with the barbell, but a lot of people, they end up bouncing if they're not as used to benching, you know, if they're not as advanced. You don't have to be advanced, you just have to be like an intermediate, late novice to, to master that. But here's the penley rows. Okay, penley rows, same idea. Uh, instead of a bent over row, we do penley rows because one, carries over to the deadlift. It's a heavy pull off the floor. It's very close to my conventional deadlift starting point. And uh, we get less weight on the bar because we're resetting it every rep. So we're still getting the same stimulus though. Uh, and we're supposed to pull these explosively. You can see I've used the bumper plates now. Uh, you guys can't see because the plates, the bumper plates are fat in the camera angle. I have 160 pounds on the bar. I'm so, I was, I've been doing 165 for the past few months. When my coach is like, hey, um, you know, they're not fast enough. So I went 160. And the next work, maybe it's even 155. I, I do them at 155 now. On the next video, you'll see I do them at 155. Because I really want to work with explosiveness. Also, if you rewind back to my sheet, these are actually after my tricep extensions on the sheet. But I like to do these before the tricep extensions because I'm just too fatigued to do these because these are explosive. I can probably row 185, not explosively, which is not what I'm trying to do. A lot of people, they get wrong from misinformation from the bodybuilding world that they want slow reps or focus on a muscle. Right? They've done studies that, like for a bench press, if you focus on the chest during a bench press, you'll get more chest activation. Focus on the triceps, you'll get more tricep activation. That was actually true. But if you did the reps explosively, obviously with good form, but if you did the reps explosively, you got more chest and triceps than if you focused on one and didn't do it explosively. So we know explosive reps are the way to go. Um, also, I did the chin ups earlier in the workout, so that's what I have for back. Here's the tricep extensions. I'm doing them off the floor. Uh, this is not the right way to do it. I'm doing this for very specific reasons to myself. The reasons why is that, well, I was doing JM press for the longest time. JM press is still a good movement, but after a few months of doing JM press, it kind of kind of got my elbows a bit. So maybe this isn't the best choice to do biomechanically, but just mentally because my elbows were kind of hurting. Not hurting, they're a little sore. I did not want to lay on a bench and get the full range of motion because I was scared of what would happen when I hit the bottom. So just mentally, I did that. And obviously, this is suboptimal work for the triceps. I'm not getting full range of motions with the shoulder or elbow joints. But uh, I didn't really care because the whole point of this is just to get extra tricep work before my meet. So I wasn't going to risk, even if there was no actual physical risk, just mentally, I had that there. Like, hey, I don't want to do that. But anyways, here's me. I'm weighing in at 209. Just under 210, first time in a minute. Cuts going good, you can see the quads. We're uh, max effort lower day, July 24th. Um, back squat, back squatting for the last time before my meet. I may do a day where I squat, bench, and deadlift to like 90% all in one just to prep myself for the meet, but this is my last actual day maxing on it. Okay, so this is the day I decided to, uh, to go to 100 kg. You'll see my squat was really bad. But um, this is with two plates, so 255 pounds. I, I don't know what the weight is, honestly. I think it's like 250 pounds, 260 pounds. But uh, yeah, the tricep, like my perceived risk in my mind was not worth it. Like say maybe I would not, I'd lose five pounds on my bench in, in a meet uh, because I didn't do them properly. I was just scared, hey, 
if I if I'm a little injured and I do the full range of motion, I might miss 20 pounds on my bench if I injure myself. That was just my mindset there. And I do do them properly in the next workout, actually. I just needed a few weeks to build confidence in the movement. Uh, this is three plates. That was really heavy. That 374, that felt like 90%, even higher. So here's me. I don't remember the exact weight here, but it's around 400 pounds. I think it's a few pounds slightly below. I think that's 10 kg on the side. Yeah, so this is... On, oh, 5 kg. So I'm doing 180 kgs there, which is like 396, I believe. So here's 420. This was the minimum amount that I was happy getting in my meat. Have it be on a second attempt or a third attempt. This is at 90 kg. Like in the worst case scenario, I wanted this to be my third attempt and I wanted to hit it. And I fail it miserably, like completely horribly wrong. So after this... My, if you follow my Instagram, you'll see I made a post of my coach saying, hey, I'm not going to make weight on time. Uh, not make weight on time. It, when I make weight on time, I wouldn't be strong enough because of how long it took me to make weight. And it'd be too much, too soon to the meat. Don't want to cut into the meat. You can cut into meats if you're fat. So I'm fat, right? Not completely obese, but you've been watching my videos from the beginning. Even a few months back, I was 35-ish. I uh, started the year as 240 when I started with my coach, or uh, 250 when I started with my coach, and last August, started the year as like 240. So I do have that little bit of leeway because I'm like overweight. So I could have cut, because 200 pounds still, I'm 5'9, maybe 5'10. I was 5'9 in grade 11, haven't measured myself since then. But, anyways, I don't think I recorded the third rep there. But yeah, here's the good mornings. Same scenario. I know you guys used to see me doing safety squat bar good mornings, which are much harder with like 240 or 250 to 60 for three times 12 and then i went to the good morning straight bar was because i'm going into a meet i want to get practice with the straight bar also it's going to work the lower back a little more which is my weak point i was doing 250 to start form was horrible my coach said you know what just bring it to 225 for a bit form was still horrible that's when we really confirmed the lower back weakness watching the footage so then we went to 185 i just felt embarrassed to do good mornings with 185 but then you know I said to my coach, hey, what about do it off slings? Because he said, you know, I'm not hitting depth. I'm not hitting depth. You don't have to go parallel, but you need to go a little lower, even a little lower than I'm going right now, maybe like one peg. So he's like, yeah, do it off the bands. And I decided to do it a little bit of a closer stance. It's still not a close stance. It is still like shoulder, a little bit outside of my shoulders, but I was using a power stance before, which is in overall, it's better. A power stance, good morning for muscle recruitment. But we we're doing it a little closer because I wanted to get that lower back and off the slings. It also was a little bit harder at the bottom because you lose the stretch reflex. We talked about stretch reflex with the dumbbells. That's basically pause work off the slings. I'm not doing it off of the bars because metal on metal is not good for the bars and it's not good for your joints. So anyways, those good mornings though, I do after a certain point, like I did like the 185 for like two, three weeks, maybe a month. And then after that month, once my lower back caught up to the rest of my body, you'll see in next videos, like I go up pounds per workout. Once that lower back caught up, 10 pounds per workout going up. Anyways, belt squats. Honestly, don't remember what I'm doing here. I think it's 225. The camera angle, the sun, I can't see it. Maybe it was 135 or sorry, not 225, 245s per side. But now thinking it might be a, a 25, a 35, and a 5. Because like I said, with these type of movements, for stuff on my sheet that says 3 sets of 10 to 12, unless it's percentage-based, I try to do it like, I try to auto-regulate it in a way where it's like, hey, do 3 sets of 10. Okay, you can do 3 sets of 10, now do 3 sets of 12. You can do 3 sets of 12. Okay, increase the weight and uh, do 3 sets of 10 now on the new increased weight. And then back to 12, decrease the weight again. And here's me. Reverse hypers only have a plate. You guys saw me doing it with three plates, maybe three plates in a 25, which is still a way to do it, but I wanted more strict. And then I did it with like a plate 25, maybe some change. Wasn't strict enough. Then I did a plate 15, still wasn't strict enough. That's that lower back we can. Anyways, I do it really strict with this plate. And yeah, that's the rest of this video. I'll catch you guys soon.